okay so now the next class is on uh, insulin resistance how the insulin resistance develops as well as on the clinical features of diabetes mellitus before we go into details of insulin resistance we should know in brief about the mechanism of action of insulin insulin is known to bind to its receptor which is called as tyrosine kinase receptor this tyrosine kinase receptor has got uh, what we say one alpha subunit and another one a beta subunit now alpha subunit is the one which is going to bind with your insulin once it binds to the insulin what it does it brings about conformational change and that conformational change is now transmitted to the beta subunit what is this beta subunit having tyrosine residue what is tyrosine amino acid with aromatic amino acid with oh group now what will happen why do we call this as a tyrosine kinase receptor isn't it a name of an enzyme yes it is name of an enzyme kinase is a name of enzyme which does phosphorylation this is the receptor which has got a property of phosphorylation whom is it phosphorylating self it brings about autophosphorylation of all the tyrosine residues present on the beta subunit so what will happen because of this a cascade of chain of signal transduction takes place you can see over here the cascade of reactions which are causing right a chain of reaction the initiation of cascade of cell signaling responses by phosphorylating insulin receptor substrates will affect ultimately the gene expression once that has been done the actions of insulin needs to be terminated how do we terminate it we have to dephosphorylate Phos autophosphorylation cause the activation so remove the phosphate group from the tyrosine residues then it will cause dephosphorylation if the dephosphorylation happens what would happen next the insulin has to detach now but that won't happen the insulin along with the receptor will get internalized will be taken inside the cell okay and once inside the cell it will enter into lysosomes what are lysosomes the suicidal bags of the cell why they are called suicidal bags because they have degradative enzymes yes now these enzymes will degrade the insulin because it is a peptide polypeptide but the receptors it will do nothing because it cannot waste unnecessarily its resources so these receptors are resent back recycled means what they are resent back to the cellular surface so that they can bind with another insulin this is how the action of insulin acts in the body in brief when do we call it as insulin resistance then you all know that obese people are more prone for type 2 diabetes isn't it why because these people will have excessive accumulation of fat subcutaneously as well as in the organs as well even sir there are certain non obese people who have accumulation of fat in liver and other viscera's they are also prone for insulin resistance whenever there is excessive accumulation of fat in liver and muscle the free fatty acid level starts increasing why because um adipose tissue or the fats are in dynamic flux no so there is lot and lot of lipolysis that keeps on taking place and the free fatty acid level increases what should happen ideally to these free fatty acids present in the circulation they should enter the liver and in the liver they should enter the mitochondria why they should enter the mitochondria because your beta oxidation the breakdown of fatty acids the oxidation of fatty acid to acetyl coa that will be taking place only in mitochondria but when there is so much of free fatty acid available your mitochondria will shut down in sense they will be saturated their oxidative capacity is completely saturated so the free fatty acids are no longer able to enter the mitochondria now they are roaming around in the cytoplasm so they cannot be left as it is right so they have to be reesterified now they get reesterified to form diacylglycerol 
when one glycerol molecules one OH group gets esterified we, it becomes monoacyl when two such OH groups on the glycerol are esterified with the fatty acid it becomes diacyl glycerol and do you know what is the other function of diacyl glycerol it is a second messenger okay so it will do its action what is its action it is known to activate a class of a uh, protein uh, groups called as protein kinase c kinase means it is also a phosphorylating enzyme what it will do this will start phosphorylating all the insulin receptor substrate so what does it mean that means they are bypassing the action of insulins binding to its receptor then the autophosphorylation and then the phosphorylation of IRS substrate that has been totally bypassed isn't it so no longer the cell requires binding of insulin to the receptor so there is reduction in signal transduction by insulin why because receptors are no longer binding to the insulin hence a person develops insulin resistance okay now how will a person with diabetes present these are the features but they may not be present in a particular order or sequence some and some may have just polyuria and uh, wound he delayed wound healing others may have fungal infections some may present so presentation of symptom in a clinical scenario could vary however these are the usual presenting symptoms that we should be aware of polyuria polydipsia and polyphagia polyuria polyuria means frequent urination why because there is hyperglycemia if there is hyperglycemia the kidneys try to throw the glucose out the renal threshold gets affected so there is glycosuria and you all know that glucose is osmotically active particle so it will try to imbibe wa water and try to pull the water uh, from the extra uh, in uh, from the ex surrounding tissue and there will be excessive diuresis so there is frequent micturation polydipsia poly means excess dipsia means thirst excessive thirst why the person is having th excessive thirst because he is losing lots and lots of water and he is apparently in dehydrative state hence the body gets a sensation that uh, signal that he has to drink lots of water polyphagia excessive intake of food now what happens is though there is hyperglycemia in the circulation there is increased blood but the cells are literally starving because glucose is unable to enter the cell so the body senses again it as cellular starvation and triggers the th uh, hunger uh, appetite center and there is polyphagia in spite of having polyphagia diabetic people lose effective weight because of ineffective use of glucose and excessive breakdown of the adipose tissue diabetic people are more prone for recurrent infections fungal like skin infections and there is always a slow and delayed wound healing which is uh, possibly because of affect affect i mean this microvasculature gets affected the excessive uh, sugar or the glucose present in the circulation in the wound area makes it a good nidus for the growth of bacteria hence is all there are many other multifactorial reasons which will ultimately affect the healing process of the wounds